hello, hello everybody. Welcome to the channel. My name is Lindsay and this is Life with Lindsay. Um, today we have Whip and Chat. If you do not know what a Whip and Chat is, that is when I work on my current Whip, WIP, which is work in progress. Um, and I am currently working on Halloween uh, from Distracted by Diamonds. I will link the unboxing up in the eye for you guys uh, if you'd like to see that. But I work on my project. You can work on whatever it is that you want to work on, uh, whether it be... Uh, a craft project or a household project if you have it on in the background while you're running errands or doing you know boring chores around the house that kind of stuff um you can treat it kind of like a podcast you can look at it if you want to you don't have to uh, <laughs> but uh, whatever you do there is no right way or wrong way to whip and chat sorry there is something funky in my Try um if you're new here, hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Lindsay. I do mainly diamond painting and some other crafting related content, and I would love for you to like, subscribe, hit the bell, hop aboard the hot mess express. Let's be friends. If you've been here before, hi, welcome back. Um, I'm going to just briefly uh mention something completely unrelated to this actual whip and chat while I grab some colors. Um I mentioned this in my stories on Instagram the other day. I I am very much a supporter of small shops. I am a big supporter of let's build the community. Let's build each other up. Let's not tear each other down. Uh, but I had a situation, and I'm going to share it with you guys, with a small shop. By the way... As far as I know, uh, that person has no idea that I have a channel, which is, I think, better because um, I've had situations where companies talk to Lindsay and then they realize that I have a platform, no matter how small it is, uh, and then all of a sudden they change their tune because they realize I have a platform. That being said, I was a member of the Facebook group for um rhinestone rhinestone goddess creations i believe is the name of it and i very unfortunately i've been in that group for quite a while and i never understood how to purchase from that group i never understood how it really worked as far as my understanding goes with that specific group is that they are facebook sales only now, I know nothing about the owner or her process or anything like that. And I, again, I'm not here to criticize her business model or anything like that. But I do need to get this off my chest and I do need to address this. And then I'm going to move on from it and talk to you guys about life. Um, let's see what color I want to work on. So, and I'm going to do all of that while I am diamond painting, hopefully. Uh, anyway, so I had multiple times in my time in that group, asked for renderings of images, asked what the turnaround time was, asked how do you purchase this, what's the price, all these kinds of things. And I was always met with sending you a DM. And um, I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't check to see if they went to my spam folder, but I never once got a message from the owner. So fast forward to... Uh, there was a post made because an artist was an AI artist and they were removed from the roster because they didn't want to support AI art. I don't know if it was like officially publicly made or if I just found that out or whatever the case may be. Either way. So they posted an image and, uh, it very likely to my super untrained eye looked like AI artwork. Now, if you guys have been here for any length of time, I have made it very clear it's not my place to tell someone whether they should or shouldn't support AI art or whether they should or shouldn't buy AI art. I'm just here to give you guys the facts and the examples and show you what's out there and let you make your own decisions about it. That being said, keep in mind I had been in this group for quite some time. Uh, I asked underneath the one image, AI question mark. And that was it. That was all that I said. Instead of messaging me privately and letting me know yes or no or whatever it was, the owner took it upon herself to remove me and block me from the group. I'm fine. Like, 
I, I'm going to be just fine not being in that group. Uh, however, my issue is that that's completely unprofessional. You can be hypocritical, like that's on you. Again, not my place to tell her how to run her business. But what I do think is super immature is blocking somebody for asking a question. Now, there's a website out there. It's called Hive Moderation. And it works very similarly to um, like Tenai, if you guys have ever used that, uh, which is a website that you can upload an image and it can tell you, it can, not always, but it can show you artist information or you know, if it's on a deviant art website or different things like that, um, it's like a step above uh, Google image search for lack of better description. So this basically runs something through their program and it can detect if they believe it is AI or what percentage of it was computer generated. Uh, and I ran that image through and it came back 99.99%. So again, I don't mind if the image was AI or not. My issue is that instead of addressing it like a professional business owner, they decided to just block me and remove me from the group as if I wasn't going to notice. Like I was pretty active in the group. I commented on things, um, you know, I, and that's fine. Uh, and, you know, as far as I know, I, I have no idea if I'm the only person who's ever been removed from this group. I really don't know. And at the end of the day, like, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it, but I will no longer be supporting this business. Understandably, I hope, um, it's not my place to, like, I don't need to love every business that's out there. And I can support businesses who have artwork that I'm not into, you know, I, there are definitely shops out there who their rendering style is not my jam or the artwork that they provide is totally the opposite of what I would buy. But we support, support our small businesses, especially those run by other diamond painters. Um, you know, when I first went on like my little mini rant about it on Instagram, I was like, I don't know if I'm just being petty about it or what. But the more I sat and think, like thought about it, like the more it bothered me that this was the level that a business owner wanted to take um, instead of actually like addressing it or even removing the comment and private messaging me. Um, for whatever reason, that was how she opted to handle it. So, um, and so I have no idea. I've had people ask me before about the, her company. And I honestly have no idea because I've tried ordering multiple images, but I can't figure out how to do it. And I had somebody use one of her kits for Alice in a Winter Wonderland. And it was absolutely fantastic. And that's actually why I joined her group in the first place. Me personally, I'm not a huge fan of somebody who only does like Facebook. But like I said, I've never actually made a purchase with her. So I have no idea if she sends you a PayPal invoice or a Shopify link. I have no idea. Um, so I just wanted to address that and kind of get it off my chest because it has been, you know, weighing on me and bothering me that um, that's the level of professionalism that was taken. And, you know, I, as far as I know, um, how do I say this? Because, like, I obviously don't want to go overboard and I don't want to be a dead horse and I don't want to be petty like I was trying not to be. Um, but at one point in her VIP, she wanted to do a Halloween event and name it Drills and Chills and was very shocked to find out that there was already a Drills and Chills. And I'm not going to sit here and say that everybody needs to know about every event that ever existed. But I do find it odd that somebody who claims to be such an active part of the community had not only never heard of Drills and Chills, again, you don't need to have heard of it, but you didn't bother to just search on Facebook or the hashtag, and then you would have seen for years this has been an event. So um, I address that. I'm moving on, but that is that. So again, m from me to you, I cannot recommend them due to a lack of professionalism. That being said, I am back in my craft room i feel terrible i did a whip and chat 
uh, two weeks ago, and it was titled, like, I'm back! Um, and if you guys would like to see that, I'll link that one for you guys up in the eye, but I'm not back. <laughs> Spoiler alert, in case you haven't seen. Um, this particular whip and chat is gonna be a little bit more, uh, vulnerable, just like me talking to you guys directly, as opposed to me updating you guys on my day-to-day -day and what I've been up to and all of those things. Not that this is a format change or anything like that. I just, to put it briefly and frankly, I've been struggling. Uh, I've been struggling. <sighs> this is a very vulnerable video for me, you guys. Um, which some of you may be watching this and being like, Lindsay, you cry all the time. Or you talk about private things, heavy emotions all the time. But this particular video feels more vulnerable um to me you know who knows if in a few minutes I won't like kind of change course but I my daughter went back to school went went to started school uh in in uh August sorry I'm I have a weird glare because of the uh ring light and flash combination so sometimes I have to get kind of up close Anyway, my daughter went to start of school and I thought that this would be something that I easily adjust to and I'm realizing that that's not the case. Um, I know a lot of what I talk about has to do with the fact that I'm a mother, but I'm going to say if you have like household responsibilities... Um, or you're a caretaker of someone else, whether it be a, a partner or... Um, a child, grandchild, parent, relative, whatever, it's, it's a lot. Um, the mental load is a lot. And I am realizing that I am currently being slowly crushed under the mental load that I am carrying. And... Um, ever since I became a mother, I've been one of those people that I've always said, I don't understand these people that have it all. Like, how can they do it? And I can't. And, and if you guys have been around, you've heard me say like, that's bullshit. <laughs> There's no such thing as having it all. If you are a mother to a small child and your kid is happy and healthy and your, your house is really clean and your, your fridge is stocked. You haven't done laundry. Or if your, um, your family is happy, you know, your house might be a disaster. Like there's no way to have every single aspect of life lined up and perfected, uh, without there being negative consequences particularly for the person carrying the mental load. If you guys don't know what I mean when I'm saying the mental load, I mean, you know when you wake up in the morning and you go, okay, on my to-do list today, I know I have to, I have to take a shower. Oh, I got to grab that thing out of the dryer. Oh, did I, I hope that it's still dry. If it's not dry, I'm going to have to add another cycle. So let me wake up like 15 minutes early and then let me take a shower and then I'll get dressed and then I'm going to get my breakfast and I got to make sure I'm out the door by this time so I can get to work. And then, oh shoot, don't forget to call your chiropractor and make an appointment. And when did I have that dentist appointment again? Oh, right. Oh shoot. Did I pull out the meat to thaw it for dinner tonight? These are all things on your mental load. You can have a mental load, whether it's just you in the house or, or like I said, it can be anybody else. If you are in charge of anything and there's someone else there, you've got this. You're dealing with this. It's going to just be at different levels and it's going to just be about different things. Like, I'm sure if you're a grown person um, and you have grown children, you're probably not worried about, like, spirit days for your kid or something like that. Um, but for me, I thought my husband went back to work. I'm going to just quickly fall into a routine and everything's going to work itself out and it'll be okay. I'm here to tell you that has not been the case. Um, one of the things that... If you ever watch, like, TikToks or Reels, you always see these videos of people being like, I never realized before I became a parent that I was going to have to be in charge of deciding what somebody eats for the rest of their life, every single day for the rest of their life. It can even be about just you. Like, that task is daunting and 
if you have someone in your life who is typically in charge of that or you're the one in charge of it, like for me, when I say, what do you want to eat? It's not because I'm trying to be difficult. It's because I am simply tapped out. My brain has no capacity to think any further. My brain has no capacity to make any important decisions. And I just want someone else to say, this is what they want so that I can make it happen instead of going back and forth. And I know I've had this conversation with my husband. He's like, well, I don't like giving suggestions because, you know, nine times out of 10, you say no to them. And I'm like, I would rather say no to 99 and one to yes than have to make that decision on my own. Now, Everybody out there is going to be different and not everybody out there is going to feel the same way that I do. And I know that I am not like on a platform speaking for all parents out there or all wives out there or all whoever out there. But I am telling you that this is something that is universally felt and it feels like only more recently is it starting to be discussed. Um, if I knew before I had my child how heavy this would be, what the mental load was and what it truly looked like, you know, things might have been different in my life. I might have made different choices. I, you know, I'm not saying that I regret my child or my family or my life or anything like that, but um, if I could have been better equipped, I would have been. And um, for me, it's now gone to, I have a child who has to go to and from school every single day and a husband that has to go to and from work uh, most days. And then the same child has so many activities. And let me, let, what is up with every single youth sport being like right at dinner time? Like you literally have two options. You can have dinner at like four o'clock or like eight o'clock. It's awful. Um, and I understand it's because of like working parents. Obviously parents who are working a nine to five can't take their kid to an activity at four o'clock. I get that. But it is just, it is a lot. Because now not only am I having to plan life out, um, but I'm having to do it on a very difficult time schedule. And for me, my husband has, he has a couple different shifts, but his typical most days of the week shift is uh, he starts at the same time my daughter has to be at school, which means that I have to drive him to work first and then drive her to school um, because we've discussed this. The bus that comes, uh, if it, if I was, it doesn't give me enough time to put my kid on the bus and then take my husband to work. Uh, and there are days where, you know, if Briar and I don't have anything scheduled, then he'll just drive the car. And for me personally, I'm one of those people. I do not like the idea of being left alone at home without, an, without a car, like in case of an emergency. Uh, I do have a travel vest, which thank God for that, because that does give me the luxury of if there's something going on, I can take an Uber. But anyway, I, uh, like tonight, my husband has the car and my daughter and I didn't have anywhere to go. Of course, I screwed something up with dinner. This is yet another story. And so my husband, like literally at midnight tonight or 11 o'clock tonight, he's going to have to run to a market before his, be, after his shift ends, but before he comes home, because the thing that I planned out for tomorrow for the crock pot that has to be cooked for eight hours, I won't have the car. And, uh, I can do a grocery order, but if I do a grocery order, then it won't be to my house on time. This is part of like the stuff I'm talking about. I'm gonna take a sip of water real quick. <laughs> and all of these things are on a constant loop in my head. So I am now trying to figure out how to get, you know, both my husband and daughter to and from their prospective places. On top of that, my daughter ice skates three times a week, um, two of which are right at dinner time. One of which is very close to our house. The other of which is like 35 minutes from our house. So the one that's really close to our house, if we get home quickly, because, you know, children run on their own time frame. If we get home quickly, then we can have dinner at a somewhat reasonable time. The other rink 
we're not having dinner till it's like her bedtime. So now, not only am I stuck coordinating all of the things, school, work, uh, activities, I am now not only planning for food, but I have to plan based on the time that I need to be in the car and the time that I'll be home. So, for example, when my husband works till 5.30, if my daughter doesn't have an activity that night, I have to have my dinner completely cooked and ready to go before I pick him up. Or I have to have something that's sitting in a crock pot that I can serve the second we walk in the door. Or the third option is something that takes just a few minutes to prepare. Whether it's like, let me throw this in the microwave, boil it off in the stovetop, whatever it is. Because I don't want to end up having dinner at like 7 o'clock at night. So not only am I coordinating everything, but I'm having to plan everything out based off of time and activity. Then you have the situations where plenty of times my daughter is ice skating and my husband is uh, done at the same time that my daughter needs to be at the rink. Well, I can't be in two places at once. So that means then we have to coordinate that those are days my husband will take a ride share home. <sighs> it is very, very frustrating trying to... Like, I have a shirt that says, like, Momager of Chaos or something along those lines. And, like, I got it because I thought it was, like, cute and silly. But, like, the more I'm in it, the more I'm like, oh, this is, like, really what it's like. And for me, I, like, it's it's nothing new for me to coordinate my kids' schedule. But now, on top of it, like, she came home with a library book the one day. And I said to her, when does this go back? And she goes, I don't know, Tomorrow? Now, it's not like old libraries where it had the card in it that told you the due date. There's nowhere on her student portal that tells me how long they take library books out. I don't know when the next library day is. I come to find out one person tells me, oh, it's the same day of the week every single week. So, like, if she goes Friday, it's every Friday. But then someone else tells me, you know, that they do cycle days. So, if it's on day five of the cycle and they're off one day because of a holiday, that fifth cycle day now rotates to the next week. And I'm like, oh my God. I am now dealing with trying to fight technology that was never explained to me. Like, I have no idea how to use my kids' portal. I have no idea what I'm doing. I, you know, <laughs> trying to coordinate all these things, it just feels like every day I'm just slipping further and further away and I am struggling more and more and like every day I wake up and I question like who am I every little shred of who I was before I was a mother seems to be gone I now seem to be in this like homemaker role that I don't want to be in I never chose to be in this role and even if I was a working mother I would still be in this role because it defaults to me to take care of the appointments and the sports and, and to keep track of the school calendar and oh, the Jewish holidays and everything. And it just is so overwhelming. And it's like every day I'm just being crushed more and more by the pressure. And as much as I want to take time to enjoy the things that I enjoy, like diamond painting... Trying to find the energy at the end of the day to carve out any me time is non-existent. It's non-existent. I am so depleted from all of the things that I've already been doing all day long that when it comes to, like, anything, anything at all for me, I just don't have the mental capacity or the energy to do it. So this is my first time diamond painting in a week. Um, this canvas should have been done you know, a week ago, or close to a week ago, there's really not that much left. I just, I don't have, I don't have it in me to work right now. I don't have it in me to, to do anything for myself. And I am just finding that, like, I make progress with one thing, and then I just fall apart behind the scenes. And... I'm trying to completely, like, overhaul different parts of my life and try to put systems in place to help me. But then coming up with the mental energy to be able to do those things 
And then the physical energy, because I'm so depleted at the end of the day from going back and forth, from driving here, from doing this, from running this errand. You know, it just is exhausting. And I don't know if it would make a difference if my kid went to school for a full day or if this is going to be this hard next year. I don't know. But what I do know is that something has got to give because I am... I'm at a point that I don't like who I am. I don't like where I'm at in life. And I'm just really, I'm really struggling. Like, really, really badly. And I always say it's okay to not be okay, but, like, I don't even know how to ask for help at this point. I don't know what I need help with. I just, I need more hours in the day. I need more energy. I need, I just need more. <laughs> And it's really, it's exhausting. It's exhausting waking up every morning with dread and just being like, I have to do it again. I have to do it again. Is it going to get easier? Is it going to, am I ever going to fall into a routine? Is it ever going to get easier? And I know there are people out there who are going to just like scoff at this and be like, it's not that hard. Your life's not that hard. Blah, 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 But then there are going to be other people out there that hear this and, and feel seen and heard. And, like, they're not alone. Because you're not alone. If you're dealing with this, trust me, you are not alone. You're not alone at all. But so many people don't want to talk about it because there's so much shame around complaining about motherhood. Complaining about life in general. Because somebody always has it worse than you have. And I am not one of those people that can just, like, positive attitude my way through things. Like, I, I can't. I just, I can't. I, and I, I envy people who can just put on a smile and make everything seem like it's all right. And, you know, also, I don't want to pretend that I'm okay when I'm not. But I'm just trying to find my way. And while I'm doing all of this, it makes me realize, like, this is not what I thought my life as a mother was going to be like, ever. Um, I am not somebody who enjoys cooking. I don't enjoy being in the kitchen at all. Um, the thought of, like, planning out actual meals just overwhelms me. And I am also not somebody, unless it's, like, regular, like, spaghetti kind of thing, like, uh, tacos that come in, like, a, like, the white people taco night tacos, uh, which, if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's uh, Keith from the Try Guys. He has, like, a little musical group, and they have a song called White People Taco Nights. Um, and it's all about, like, the taco kits that we get. If you haven't seen it, look it up. It's funny. Um, anyway, I, uh, I, I am not the kind of person that has recipes in my head. Uh, even when I was cooking, when my husband was working before the pandemic, I would have the recipes that I liked and I would just cycle through them and then I would come back like I would it was never from memory uh I am somebody I'm you know blame it on the ADHD but I am somebody like I have to look at the instructions on the back of a box like 15 times I throw it in the trash I pick it back out of the trash I know that it says 10 to 12 minutes at 350 degrees but my brain can't let me know that it's 10 to 12 minutes at 350 degrees like I just I don't know what it is um but so that makes things challenging. So now, now I am meal planning everything, which, okay, fine. Uh, but now I not only am meal planning, but I have to use my crock pot. I, there's physically no way for me to not use my crock pot unless we eat dinner. Uh, nope, that's not true. I still wouldn't be able to do it. Um, and I am one of those people, call me crazy if you want to, but I am one of those people that I cannot handle. Like, I am so paranoid using a crock pot while I'm not home. But I've come to the realization that, like, I legit am not going to be able to function if I don't. So now, what I have to do, and if you guys have any helpful tips, not like, a, oh, I can't believe you can't do that kind of thing, because that's, that's not constructive or helpful to anyone. Um, I have to look at the recipes and time them out. So for example, on Monday, my husband will be home from work at like 345. My daughter has ice skating from 540 to 640. 
We get home. Let's say we get out of there. The second skating is done. So like 7.15, we're done-ish. I have to have something planned out where it can either be in the crock pot for the length of time that we've been gone or longer. Um, yeah, that's it. So I have to look at it, but do I have anything else going on during the day that's going to affect me being able to do like an eight hour recipe or things like that? It's a lot of what I'm going to call mom math, which is really like backwards everything. And I know everybody does it, whether they have kids or not, that like if you have an appointment at a certain time, you know, you have to leave at a certain time, which means you have to get ready by a certain time, which means you have to take a shower by a certain time. And then you go backwards to figure out what time you need to leave to do said thing. Um, the same thing is what's happening with the meal planning. So I have no ability to just wing it anymore because I need to plan out on the days that we're not home that I, or that I don't have to go pick my husband up because the days that like, if he was home at three forty-five, or 4 o'clock or whatever, and we didn't have anything else going on, that could definitely be a meal that I just like throw something in the oven before I come. Or, like, something on the stovetop. Something smaller, you know. Um, but I don't have that luxury when it's, you know, I have to be out the door at this time. And my kid has some activity till this time. And um, it's, there's a lot of, like, oh, I'd like to do the, this recipe, but I can't make that work. Like, my daughter wants hot dogs one night this week. So, hot dogs can only be done on a night that we don't have... Um, it could be done on a night where my husband's done at 5.30 because I can heat the hot dogs up beforehand. And then uh, when I get home, just turn the pot back on to heat them all the way through or, you know, something like that or um, something along those lines. But when I have these longer nights, like I have to have something that's sitting in the crock pot. So it's now like not only am I figuring out what do we want to eat and I have to make, you know, somewhat balanced meals uh, if you guys don't know, I am not a chicken person. I don't like chicken. I absolutely despise cooking with chicken. Uh, the thought of raw chicken makes me, makes my stomach turn. Uh, but I also have to understand that I am not the only one in this house. So I do eat chicken. It's definitely not a preferred protein for me and I could go the rest of my life and never eat it but I know that like that's what my husband and my daughter like so for example this week I am doing a chicken recipe but it is something that's going to be in the crock pot so I then have to write out all of my ingredients for my recipes and next to them I'm writing like the cook time so if it's low for uh eight hours but high for three to four I'm writing that down and then I'm writing down next to that the days of the week based off of the schedule that I have, which days that might work for. Because then once I decide what meal is happening on what day, I have to make sure that I am purchasing my produce and my meat correctly. I'm not going to buy ground beef that expires in two days if I need it in like five days. Sure, I could put it in my freezer and then thaw it out. But like then I have to worry about I don't have a lot of freezer space because I have a lot of you know, quick, like, freeze, like, Trader Joe's kinds of, like, microwavable or oven kind of meals, which, FYI, tonight, if you are ever somebody who's, like, I don't know what to do, and I have a lot of stuff in my house, um, do a whatever you want kind of day. Like, for us, it was Briar and I for dinner, my husband was at work, and I said, what do you want to eat out of the freezer? And that's what I made. If she was old enough, I would let her do it herself. But, you know, I'm not going to let her operate an oven at five. Um, but that worked out well. I was hoping that we could get rid of some of the boxes. Of course, both things she wanted to eat, which were spicy nugs, which FYI, they are spicy plant-based nuggets, and they are delicious, and mozzarella sticks. And they both came out of, like, bags, so they didn't really take up that much room in the freezer anyway. But I digress. So it just... In order for me to just figure out the week, it, there's so much planning involved. So much planning. And anybody else in this situation where you have kids that have activities after school, like, is it this difficult even when they get older? Or does it does it get easier? Like, I really want to know. Because I am just so worried that, like, this is where I'm stuck and this is where I'm going to be. And I honestly don't know, like, that I can mentally handle this for 12 more years and um 
it's just, it hits a lot. And then on top of it, I have to coordinate sports stuff. I'm like, for example, my daughter, when she goes horseback riding, she needs to be able to either change into jeans or have jeans on. Uh, if she's wearing like joggers or leggings, she can't wear that on the horse because she needs to have more grip. So I would really rather not have two completely different outfits for her to wear on a day that she has to go horseback riding. But it's not always an option, just depending on like what the weather is like and things like that. Um, or days that my daughter goes ice skating because of what she wears, which she just wears like skating pants on top of whatever she's wearing. It works out really well most of the time, but I noticed denim gets like bulky under her pants. She's never complained about it, but as her mom, it's easier for me to get the skate pants over shorts or leggings or, you know, non-denim items, or if she's wearing a dress, it's easy. Um, but then it can't be too long of a dress because then she snags it on her ice skates. It's like, these are, this is what I mean. Like, if you don't know what the mental load is like, listen to this whip and chat and you'll hopefully have an understanding because like literally this is what's going through my head at all times. Even when I'm being quiet, my brain is not. And it's just like, okay, I got to make sure I have this. So one thing I did to help put things in place for me is I got a set of rolling drawers in my daughter's room. It's, I actually got a set of their craft drawers from Michael's, but it is rainbow colored drawers. So I think it's red, orange, green, blue, and purple. There's no yellow if I'm correct. Um, and so what I do is like today I picked out all of the clothes for my daughter for the week. You guys are seeing this on Tuesday. Hopefully, um, it was recorded Sunday. So today we picked out all of her clothes for the week. I have to do that by looking at what the ske the calendar looks like, you know, for events and sports and things like that. And for the weather, obviously, I don't want to send my kid to something in to school in something that she's going to be too cold in or that isn't appropriate for the weather. Um, and honestly, like I know I could change my kid from whatever she wore to school to something else to go horseback riding in or to go to Cub Scouts in or whatever else. But, you know, I also would like to call me selfish, have to do less laundry, not more laundry. Um, I have never once in my life been caught up with laundry and it just feels more apparent as my husband has work uniforms that need to be constantly washed. My daughter has clothes that constantly need to be washed. And I'm just like, okay. So I have to plan all that out because if I do a load of laundry, I can't let it sit in the dryer. Like it has to be, I have to switch it over to the dryer or else I have to rewash it. It's just, it never, ever ends. And I know that like for somebody who doesn't get it, like they might just think that I'm just complaining or even that I, I sound entitled, but it is... It is so much more than that. And I wish, I wish that nobody out there listening had to deal with it. But I know that's not the reality that we live in. I know the reality is that whatever your life looks like, you deal with this to some capacity. Maybe you don't have kids, but you're in charge of cooking and cleaning for your entire household. Maybe your kids are older and they can do their own laundry, but they eat everything in sight and you go to the market seven times a week. Um, it just, it exists in some capacity in most people's lives. And it's just, I'm just trying to find that balance and I'm trying to find those systems. And I have to redo a lot of things in the kitchen because, um, my kitchen layout is horrible. Like I hate it. Uh, whoever designed it never designed it to be functional. Uh, so that's super fun. But for me, like my daughter's snack table blocks a couple of my drawers and every time I need something in one of those drawers, I have to physically pull the table out and then all the snacks on the snack table fall off behind the table and then I'm having to pull the whole table out and climb back behind there and pick it up. And when I say a table, I mean like a little kid, like basically like a card table, but for toddler size. Um, and, you know, it's, I mean, hopefully it's not something I have to deal with forever, you know, but we've talked about moving the snacks and it's like, well, where are we going to put the snacks that are 
easily accessible to her because the number one reason of putting the snacks where we put them in the first place is that it gives my daughter the independence to go grab whatever snacks she wants and not have to be mommy can you get me this daddy can you get me this like it's fine if she gets it and says mommy can you open it but it's a lot different than mommy can you go into the kitchen mommy can you show me what we have mommy can you show me the two flavors of that I want that one no I want that one no I want that one let me go back to this one and then it's like make a decision this way it gives her that independence and it also alleviates a little bit of extra added stress for myself, which isn't that the goal here. And it just trying to find the balance of everything. We need to take everything that's ever been put on our counters off and like start from scratch. It's just if I use the island, not the island, like the high countertop that I have, then I need a step stool because I can't reach it. If I need to get certain things, I can't reach it. We have no Tupperware that has tops. All of the lids are gone. Like, I don't understand. And then all of a sudden, I went to grab a Ziploc bag to put leftovers in because I didn't have a Tupperware container. I don't have any more Ziploc bags. Also, does it drive anyone else nuts? I, I have a rule with my daughter. The, the rule is, when there are three pairs of underwear left in your drawer, you tell me. Not when you took the last pair and put them on your body because that means that mommy has to do laundry right then and there. The rule is three pairs of underwear. That gives her, like, in case there's an accident or an emergency situation, like, it gives me a little bit of a buffer. I am the same way with everything. Like, if you are noticing there's not a lot of trash bags left, don't wait until the last trash bag has been used. Because guess what? <laughs> that puts more on my shoulders. And, again, I know I can do grocery delivery for certain things. But, like, if I need something for a recipe that I'm cooking and I didn't know it was the last one was used... You know, this week, this past week, I had been to the market five times in three days. Um, and I was over it. Um, you know, when I do my meal planning, I try the best that I can to double check and make sure that we have all of the ingredients, like double check. Do I have butter? Do I have eggs? Do I have this? Like certain things I know that I don't have. Like I need Mafalda noodles this week for a recipe. I know I don't have them. They're going on my list automatically. But I was like, I left my fault. I left the better than bouillon out on the counter after I used it and it was there overnight. So now I have to toss it. Um, and if I don't write that down on my list, even if I don't need it for a specific recipe, the next time I need chicken stock or bouillon, I'm not going to have any. And it's just trying to keep up with everything and know everything that's running low. Like, I just wish there was a way that, like, when we're running low, everybody let mommy know. You know, it's just really frustrating. Like, my daughter literally had, like, one square of toilet paper tonight. And I was like, Briar. And she's like, I have enough. I have more. I'm like, you don't have more. But if you had told me this, I could have brought you a roll from downstairs. Um... And I am queen of getting upstairs and realizing we have no toilet paper left. Um, and, you know, thankfully, my husband, I can usually be like, hey. But I don't want to be told, oh, that was the last roll of toilet paper. You know, like, tell me that before. If you bring it up, go, oh, hey, we're out of toilet paper. And then I'll go get more. So anyway, it was just a lot of, like, little things. One of the days we had to go to two markets because we needed to get... Um, specialty meat I needed to get a beef brisket for Rosh Hashanah um and unfortunately like my supermarket only had like corned beef and it just I was like you know what forget it we're just gonna get like the good stuff and it's all like local butcher and it worked out well it was it's what I needed but it just sucked having to go to more than one place because that place also doesn't have like your everyday market stuff but it's just been a lot. And, like, my daughter made a comment to me because she's like, well, you basically just sit around all day while I'm at school. Like, uh, no, tiny human. I absolutely do not. And if mommy is sitting around for a couple minutes, it's probably because I'm sitting on the couch, like, dissociating and, like, trying to enjoy a warm cup of coffee on my own and trying to just stay afloat. And it's just exhausting. And on top of this, I'm now dealing with, like, 
I'm the coordinator between my daughter and anything for school. Okay, fine. Not a big deal. But I also didn't expect by a month into the school year to have already had multiple conversations that were not easy to have with the administrators. I've had two phone calls with the principal. I've had one run-in with the PTO, which is the parent-teacher organization. My husband was thrown off that it wasn't a PTA. And there was another similar thing, and I can't even remember what it was. Um, I've had a meeting with my daughter's teacher that I set up because I thought it was important. I mean, I feel very out of the loop. I think if I were going to give anybody advice who is heading into my situation, I would let them know, find the school's handbook before your kid starts kindergarten and read it. And from there, if you have questions, reach out to the administrators before your kid starts school. So I don't know if I spoke about the spirit days with you guys or not, because honestly, it's been such a time suck and I don't know what's going on and I have no concept of like how long things have been. And I do have to say, like, I felt really bad that I put up a video and it was like, I'm back. And then literally that was the only thing I put out for two weeks. So my bad. Um, but at the end of the day, like family always comes first. Okay. But I am not going to put myself in further harm by sacri sacrificing any little bit of like mental health left that I have to just provide content. And I think that all of you understand that. And um, I don't think that, I mean, I would hope that nobody out there has a problem with that in any capacity. I honestly, like, I love you guys. I have the best subscribers ever. And you guys have always been so understanding that I can't see that being an issue. But I, you know, I just want to address that. But I had another issue that I dealt with this past week. And it was stressful. And I was not happy about it. So, every school has their own policy on excused and unexcused absences and sick days and things of that matter. So, my daughter woke up on Thursday with a 100.4 degree fever. So, by their standards, I am not allowed to send my kid to school. Now, I knew it was coming. Uh, she had been sneezing for a couple days, which my daughter very rarely sneezes. And... Okay, sorry, I was trying to... I did have too many there. And then when I picked her up from school, I noticed one of her classmates had on a mask. And um, I have interacted with this family, and I know that they're no longer masking. So I was like, oh, man, this is probably a situation in which this kid is a little under the weather, you know, or whatever. And, like, you do you. Um... We masked for a very long time, and I have complete respect for anybody who still does it. And I let my daughter know, you know, if you're a little under the weather, but you still have to go to school, you're going to wear a mask to protect yourself and those around you. And um, I had actually told her the night before, you're going to wear a mask to school tomorrow, kiddo. I just, I don't want this to become anything else. Well, it became something else. So the school's policy is your child has to be 24 hours fever-free without medicine before they can return. Okay, well, my kid woke up with a fever. So by that standard, unless she woke up and then a minute later it disappeared, um, she wouldn't be 24-hour fever-free. Anyway, her fever didn't break on its own until like late afternoon, early evening. So I knew by that standard she couldn't go to school Friday. So here's what I was upset about. You get 10 absences, excused or unexcused, before then they start like investigating why you were uh, out of school and requiring doctor's notes and proof and things like that. And I'm like, I have a doctor's appointment for her out of state this month. And she's going to be off for Yom Kippur this month. I said, so that's already four of the, the 10 days that she can have for the entire school year in the month of September. So I left, I emailed the principal because I wasn't fully understanding what the absentee policy was. I was like, I refuse to take my daughter to the pediatrician and pay an $80 copay for them to be like, yeah, your kid has a cold. I already knew that, but I needed to have a doctor's note. 
And it is so frustrating that even though it's their policy that my kid couldn't come back to school the next day, that she's going to be reprimanded for it. And they were like, well, no, that's still considered an excused absence. And I'm like, I understand that, but you're telling me she only gets 10. Excused or unexcused. I guess some have more validity than others. And then this is where my thoughts and feelings went from like, I'm trying to be understanding to like, I just don't give a fuck anymore. Um, my daughter, if you guys don't know this, which unless you are brand new to this, uh, I, my, my family, we are a Jewish family and we live in a very non Jewish area to the point that like, I have literally never met another family in my County that is Jewish. Uh, the neighboring County. Yes. But our County, no. Um, and so I got a friend message me and they're like, well, what about the other Jewish families that go to school with her? And I'm like, what other Jewish families? Like, if you know them, send them my way. I don't know anyone. Um, and I can't assume based off of what somebody's name is that they're going to be Jewish or not. Uh, you know, but I had called the attendance office because I was told that if your child needs to, if if their attendance is affected in any way shape or form or they need to change how they go to or from school like my daughter is a pickup like I I drive and pick her up but if she needs to take the bus I have to let them know um and I have no idea how quickly they get through these emails you know I wanted to make sure that they knew what was going on and so I called so I called to leave a message and they called me back and of course the woman's kid is in my daughter's class I'm like cool 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 um and it's somebody my daughter wants to play with and now I'm like I do not want to interact with this person ever again but um that's neither here nor there but I specifically asked oh god this is one of those symbols that has um the pqb D, lowercase. Anyway, um, I was told by my daughter's teacher in the beginning of the school year when I asked that being off for the, any of the Jewish holidays is a, relig a religious exemption and it's never held against her. Um, and for those who are unfamiliar, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, they are 10 days apart. Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish New Year. Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement. Catholics go to church every single week and they confess their sins and they ask for forgiveness. Um, the Jews do that once a year. So when Rosh Hashanah comes around, that's when like the Book of Life, um, it's, you know, Happy New Year. And then for Yom Kippur, you are asking for forgiveness and to be sealed in the Book of Life to have another a year. And... They are the most religious Jewish holidays. Uh, that would be like forcing your child to go to school on Christmas and Easter, um, whether you are religious or not. So when I asked her, my specific question was, how far in advance can I put notice in that my daughter will be gone for the Jewish holidays. Now, Rosh Hashanah landed on the weekend this year. It has just passed. Like, it was Friday night at sundown to Saturday night at sundown. So, it wouldn't have affected her going to school anyway. Um, however, Yom Kippur is on a sun, uh, Sunday at sundown to Monday at sundown. And my daughter, I'm not, I'm not requesting my daughter to do this because she's five. But we, we fast. We go to synagogue. We ask for forgiveness for her any harm that we may have caused in the in the previous year and we hope to be transcribed in the book of life and that is in a nutshell what Yom Kippur is so I knew my child was going to be excused for it but the woman on the phone she made it very clear to me like I could I could tell right away that she was new which then the principal wanted me to give her grace because of that but she said to me oh well you need to fill out an educational trip form and I was like what and she's like, yeah, to prove that there's educational value in you taking the, the time off. And at that moment, my ears got bright red and I was fuming. I don't know how she didn't say that out loud and then immediately recoil and go, that is not that is not what I meant because you would never ask a Catholic person to fill out a document proving that they were at church. And I know that's not what her intentions were, but she doubled down on it by sending me the same, the form that I needed the next day. 
Um, and so I sent a letter to the principal because I was like, now I have to prove the purpose of me being off for a religious holiday. Um, and she called me because it's easier to discuss these things on the phone. And she keeps telling me, well, if you have any issues, you should just call me directly. And I'm like, you're the principal of the school. Like, I, I feel like you're probably a little bit busy to just answer my calls. That's why I leave an email and then you can get back to me whenever it's convenient for you. But okay. Um, I was fuming and I have never, I've always had to fight for like inclusion and things like that, but I've never had to fight it feels like I've never had to fight this hard. So on top of the already through the roof level of stress that I'm dealing with, with life and the mental load and the cooking and the cleaning and the activities and the planning and all of the things, I'm now having to defend to a volunteer, no, not a volunteer, an assistant in the office about something that I and I know that if this is not something that would affect you in your life that maybe you might think that I'm being over the top but you would never ask a Christian or Catholic person to prove that they went to church for there to be any kind of quote-unquote educational benefit for them not being in school that day um, it's not like I'm like, let me take my kid out of school so she can sit at home and watch TV all day, which by the way, if that were the case, I would fight for my kid needing a mental health day and I would be very upfront about it. Um, but I was like, so now I'm going to have four absences in the month of September. How am I supposed to make it through the rest of the school year? And my one friend said like the school district that her kids go to, that if you hit that 10th day, even if it is excused, CPS is contacted. And I was like, what? Now, I have no idea if that's true for my school district or not. Um, all I know is that I was at that point just seeing red. I was so angry with how it was being handled. And she was like, well, she's new. And I'm like, I understand she's new. But how do you not realize how ignorant that statement is as it's coming out of your mouth? That I have to prove that there's some value in me going to a religious service for my own religion. I went to a Christian school from 7th through 12th grade. And we had off for the Jewish holidays. And it's not because we had a huge Jewish population. There were three whole Jewish kids in my grade. And I'm pretty sure one in the grade above us. I'm not even sure if there was anyone in the grade below us. But just still, like, it's not... It's... <sighs> It's so frustrating. It's frustrating to have to feel like I'm constantly on edge and I'm constantly having to fight and I'm constantly having to say, this is not fair. This is not right. And I have to start all over again next year because my kid's going to go to a different school from first through fifth grade. And I know one day she's going to be like, mom, stop. Like, you're embarrassing me. But I hope that doesn't happen because, like, this is a really important argument. It's just so mentally draining and like the PTO when they emailed me back about the spirit days were saying to me you know they've reached out before and said if anybody is willing to share their culture or their religion please feel free to reach out to us and she said they've they had nobody respond and I said to her I'm going to be honest with you you have two kinds of people when it comes to these kinds of situations you have ones like me who are a straight pit bull about it and are willing to fight to like the ends of the earth to be like, this is not fair. This is not right. We need to be more inclusive. And then you have the people who have just been so beaten down by it that they don't have any fight in them anymore. And I can already feel myself drifting that way. And I am in a kindergarten parent. So for me, it has just been a lot of like mental gymnastics and a lot of exhaustion and some of it is physical, some of it is mental, some of it is both. And I just, I feel like at the end of the day, I have nothing in the tank. I have nothing for myself. I have nothing left to give. And then I have to somehow muster it all up the next day and do it all over again. And I'm really worried that I just don't have it in me to make it through the whole school year. And it makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong. And I know I'm not. I know I'm not. I know that, you know, for some people it may be a little bit easier because they enjoy cooking. They enjoy being in the kitchen. But, like, I'm not one of those people. And it just has been a lot. And 
I really hope that I can continue to make content for you guys. And it's, I would love to say every week I'm going to still strive to do a whip and chat. But I have to just get myself to a place where I can just make it through. Um, and I don't want me mustering up that little bit of energy and saying, okay, Lindsay, it's time for you to, to diamond paint. Take time for yourself. And then I start to... Um, resent this craft because it does so much for my mental health, but forcing it upon myself is not good for, you know, anything. And uh, I mean, it doesn't help that I don't super love this canvas, but I am just like, I'm sure I'm being too hard on myself and I'm sure there are more people out there that feel the same way I do, but just don't want to talk about it. And I'm just, I'm really struggling and I just wanted to come on. I had a little bit of time today. I, I, Felt vulnerable enough to share this with you guys in hopes that it helps somebody else feel less alone. Because if I had had that, maybe I wouldn't feel so shitty about myself and so lost. But if you guys made it all the way to the end, leave me some sort of heart emoji. Whatever color speaks to you, just leave that for me in the comments. But I'm going to get out of here. Um, thank you guys for hanging out. I really hope that I have some more to share with you guys soon. I have a couple unboxings that I, I just need to find the time and energy to film. Um, and I thought, silly me, when my kid goes to school, I'm going to have all the time in the world. But, um, yeah, that didn't happen. So, if you guys made it this far, again, leave me those emojis. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like this or nothing like this at all, please make sure to give this video two thumbs up. One real life, one virtual. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Come. Join the Sparkle Squad, and while you're there, hit that notification bell. I do not operate on any sort of schedule. I operate on toddler standard time, and I record when my tiny human is sleeping or sleeping. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys!